Hello and welcome to another episode from Water's Edge. Now first of all, I hope everyone's keeping well, staying safe and being out there and catching a few fish. Today we've got a little bit of a shorter video for you, something a little bit different, we've got another catch and cook. Now it is something we have done before and it would prove to be rather popular, so we're back with another. So please, if you like this video, hit that like button as we really appreciate the support. Now just last week, me and Steve were up North Norfolk on the shingle targeting the mackerel. Now mackerel is a fish you've got to feel a little bit sorry for really, they get hammered from all angles. One, they make really good pike baits. Two, you know, sea anglers like to use them for all manner of different fish as well. They're bait for however many different fish out there and also they are really, really tasty to eat. So we're down there hopefully trying to catch a few fish for the table with the aim of coming home and cooking them up. And this is how we got on. Today you catch up with us back on the salt water theme and we're up North Norfolk today fishing the shingle at Weybourne and the target species is the mackerel, something we've never really targeted before. Up this part of the coastline we only get a relatively small window to have a go. The main aim of today's session though is to actually get Steve behind the camera, his first one. He's never ever caught one, he's been with me a few times before and it's, it's one of them that's evaded him so far. So that is the aim of tonight's session. Now there's nothing really complicated with mackerel fishing, you know, and I'm certainly not going to say I'm an expert at it. I do it a few times a year when they're in, but all I've got with me, spinning rod, a decent sized fixed spool reel, it's actually loaded with mono, as I don't do enough of it, I've not, I've not bothered with braid, but that would probably be your best option. And then here we've got a, a string, I think I've got a five string on here of, of some type of feather. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> People have probably got their favourites out there, but looking through the tackle shop and, and that sort of appeal to me. And two three inches of lead on the bottom there. I've got a few other different packs with me here as well. You know, there's, I say, I have no idea what should be best or whatever. They're imitating a little fish or a little shrimp that, that they're feeding on. So that's what we've got with us. And then I have got a secondary rod. It's a little bit more specialised, I guess. A little spinning rod that we've actually used for sort of pike and perch and stuff. Real light braid on there. And then I've got like a, a Toby spoon silver flashy thing on there. And basically with that, I brought this with me because the mackerel, they, they fight ever so hard for the size. It's really, really good sport. It's good fun catching them on the feathers, but if you can, if you can catch them singly on a real light outfit, it's brilliant, brilliant fun. Also as well, stand a bit more of a chance of catching a, a little schoolie or bass or something like that on there. So that is the plan anyway. We've probably got, I don't know, about an hour or so before the very top of the tide. Sun setting in the background, there's an absolute horde of people behind me fishing as well. And um, yeah, fingers crossed we can get a few fish. I think it's time we get on it. Attempt number 560. I don't know how many times I've been mackerel fishing. I've never caught one. And I've finally had something grab hold of it. Not we, go mental. I've literally, this is the first ever fish I've caught when mackerel fishing. And <laughs> check that out. That's a PB and a first. I've honestly been, just watched them hooks fly around so many times to try and catch one of these fellas. And how good does that feel to finally break the duck? One for the barbie, mate. Mate, I literally thought that was gonna be never, ever ending sort of bogey fish that you couldn't catch. So 
So as you can see, sport was far from prolific, but we did manage a couple of nice fish for the table, and most importantly, Steve broke his long-standing mackerel duck, which I know he was very happy with. Now in this episode, we're gonna be cooking the mackerel whole, so all I've done was, on the beach, is just simply gutted them and left them like that. I popped them in a bucket, popped the cool pack on top, and then brought them home and banged them straight in the fridge. Now, of course, obviously, if you wanted, you could fill them, and there's different ways you could prep them, but for this example, I just left the fish whole. Very next day, I was up, and I took the fish around mum and dad's with the aim of barbecuing them, because dad's absolute favorite is barbecued mackerel. Now, probably the barbecue purists out there are gonna turn their nose up now, because it wasn't a charcoal barbecue. We fired up the gas barbecue, and that's the way we were gonna do it. It's just, you know, it's a bit simpler, a bit cleaner, and a bit easier, so yeah, that's what we've done. Now, to prep the fish, it's really, really simple, and as I said, always, this is just one way of doing it, but it's a tasty way, and it's a quick way. So to prep the fish, all I've done was score one side three, four times with a knife, turn the fish over, and then repeat the process on the other side. Now all this does is, it sort of allows the fish to cook that little bit quicker, and it also helps any you know seasonal herbs and spices you use to penetrate into the meat. Once that was done, it was then just a case of taking a little bit of oil and brushing each side of the fish. Now you don't really want to smother it, just a light coating really, and that helps act in two ways. One, it helps the, the skin crisp up a little bit and turns that real nice golden colour. And two, it also stops the fish sticking to the grill, which is obviously always a bonus. Once that was done, it was then just a case of taking in whatever season you wanted to use. In this case, we just use simple salt and pepper. Now, you know, I'm far from a master chef, and there is probably hundreds of different herbs and spices and things that accompany mackerel really well. But in this case, a good old grind of salt and pepper on one side of the fish, turn it over and repeat the process again, and that was all we went for. Once we've done that, it was then just a case of adding them to the grill. By now, there was enough heat in there to cook the fish. And cooking wise, you know, obviously we're putting them on hold, so you just want to make sure the full fish is access to the heat. And then probably you're talking, I don't know, around three to five minutes each side. Three to five minutes one side, turn it over, three to five minutes on the other side, until it looks done really. Obviously cooking times will, will change depending on, you know, the size of the fish you're cooking and the thickness of the fish. Once it looks done, it's then just a case of removing it from the grill and plating it up. Now in this example, we had no fancy sides. We simply served it with some nice crispy brown bread and half a lemon. And I think you'll agree, it looks rather good. Me and Dad then sat down in the garden at lunch, had a bottle of San Miguel each, which I must say really complements the mackerel. And um, yeah, it was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. It certainly got the thumbs up from Dad. Now, if you've been out there targeting mackerel too, and you also like to cook them up, then you know please share your recipes and your favourite way of doing it below, because you know we always like to hear how everyone else does it. And of course, if there's anything else you'd like to see us get out and perhaps catch and cook through the winter or the next coming months, then add that below too, because we always like to hear your suggestions. But as I say, a little bit of a shorter video today. I do hope you've enjoyed it all the same. And all that's left to say is thanks for watching, be lucky, and we'll see you again on the next one. Thank you.